All right, so in this video, we're going to be checking out the Action 2 and the Action 3 from DJI. Uh, we're going to check out some indie filters from uh, Freewell and how we can get the best footage from our FPV drones. So this is um, uh, sort of a follow-up to some of the other videos I've made on indie filters on other cameras and my philosophy on how what I feel is the best way to get the best footage on a drone which is something specifically moving pretty fast um, versus something that's standing on the ground and not moving. So there's probably a lot of videos out there that uh, has a different philosophy or different uh, perspective on how to set their settings to get the best footage. And I'm going to show you my way. And, it, you know, it's subjective. Some of you will disagree that it's not the best. Um, there's going to be a lot of people that will argue that um, it's actually totally wrong. But... To me, I feel like this is the best footage. And um, we're going to revisit the Action 2. I don't think I've made a video on the Action 2 because by the time I got this, um, it's uh, been out for a long time and um, really nothing new has happened until very recently. Uh, DJI released a new firmware for the Action 2 that uh, saves gyro data in the video file and allows you to... Uh, stabilize your footage with Gyroflow, which is something similar to uh, Real Study, that is um, in the GoPro ecosystem. And some will argue that Gyroflow is better, worse, etc. I'm sure there's, there's also another very subjective, touchy topic. Um, I'll talk about that a little bit later and what that is. The footage you're going to see from the Action 3 is on the latest firmware as well. And that has the 10-bit uh, descending-like mode. And so there's pros and cons to 8-bit versus 10-bit. The Action 2, while it does have gyro flow support, is still on 8-bit color, not 10-bit, but it does have descending like. And then the Action 3 has the 10-bit descending like color, but you can only stabilize it with the built-in stabilization in the camera. So the, currently there's no gyro flow support for the Action 3 footage. Hopefully DJI will make that available soon, because these cameras are fairly similar. Obviously they don't look very similar, but in terms of the sensor and uh, the firmware, they sh I, I imagine they will probably bring out gyro flow support sometime in the future. So obviously before we get into all of the settings to get you really good footage, you're going to need some ND filters. And uh, Freewell did send me their ND filters for the Action 2 and the Action 3. Um, these, I believe, cover everything except for the ND4s, which you have to get separately, because uh, if you want something a little bit less uh, in terms of, like, strength of ND, that's the lowest one. They don't include them in these, these sort of um, bundled packs, but you can get them separately. And, again, links will be down in the video description if you want to check out um, all of these products. So for the Action 2, they have the Bright Day 4-pack and the Standard Day 4-pack. And you can see what's on here, ND8, 16, 32, and circular polarizing for the Action 2 for the standard day. And then on the bright day, you get also four. You get an ND8, 16, 32, and 64, but these are all polarizing. And you can see the difference in the lens. This is uh, basically uh, flat panel glass, whereas this one has a rotating mechanism. So this is the standard four-day pack, and here is the uh, ND16. So comes in like here and there's like a little piece of foam that covers them and so there's the ND8 and this is the 16 I pulled out the 32 and then you have the circular polarizing one which is basically a very little um, in terms of uh, darkening effect but it has uh, the polarization feature which I'll show you that also in the other ones but it has this ring and a line that allows you to rotate the glass and as you rotate it, you can sort of kind of see the image gets darker and lighter. But the main purpose of this, is because it's a polarizing filter, it um, will reduce glares and reflections so that you get um, uh, you won't you'll see less of that in your footage. And here is what the bright day four pack looks like in eight and in the eight, sixteen, thirty-two, and sixty-four, and can pull these out. Now, for those of you that don't know what ND filters are, they're basically, in a nutshell, they're sunglasses for your camera. And the reason you need them 
is to darken the image is because these action cameras don't have a, a variable aperture. And so in order to um, reduce your shutter speed, you need something that will basically reduce the amount of light going into the camera sensor. And that's what these do. And um, to basically to reduce your, sh uh, your shutter speed actually makes the footage look more natural looking versus whereas uh, if it's a bright day out, if you don't have your sunglasses on, you're gonna have a very high shutter speed. And to a lot of people, that looks kind of jittery and unnatural looking. And so that's why you would need this to get better looking footage. And of course it's subjective. Some people say they don't really like that look. Other people say they prefer the look of the lower shutter speed. So all of these filters for the action 2, they all work the same. They just snap on and you have to sort of find the right, it only goes on a certain way. Yeah, so you have to find the right orientation and it just snaps on like so. And it's held on by magnets like so. Um, on a drone, depending upon how you're having it mounted, this might not be the most ideal uh, mechanism because it could rattle off. I haven't had that problem. I've uh, been using mainly these, um, and these have not fallen off at all. Um, also, the, the mount you use is going to matter as well. And then also, some people will say, hey, you know, uh, you can't use these filters with um, the, I guess, these special cases that now come with the Action 2. And these are like um, like heat sinks that absorb the extra heat coming off the Action 2. There's like a magnet in here somewhere, and a little sensor will turn on saying, oh, it detects that there's this case on. And all that does is when it detects the cases on, it, put, it changes the setting in the camera so that it can run at a higher temperature. And uh, obviously if you're just using this handheld, this is very useful because then this allows this to run at a higher temperature for longer. Um, but for a drone, it doesn't, this is not really super necessary because you are able to um, obviously fly it and, and the camera can cool down just from the, uh, you know, the, the wind that's coming by. But if you try and use this on the camera, this doesn't, basically allow this filter to stick on there. It does stick on there kind of, but it really will just, it'll just fall off eventually. So obviously you'd want to use it bare and then put it on like so. And just give you a closer look at the filter itself. High quality glass and metal. Uh, nothing, um, wouldn't expect any less from Freewell. Here's what the circular polarizing one looks like. And let's see if I can demonstrate that effect again. So I think when it's lined up like this, where the two line two lines are lined up, that's going to give you the most darkening effect or the most polarization. And then if it's rotated, I think it's 90 degrees. It's a little bit less. Let's go 180 degrees. It's a it's hard to tell if there's that much of a difference. Not sure if you're picking that up, but I, I am seeing slight changes um, in terms of the light light penetration. But mainly, it's going to change the polarization of the glass because there's two layers of glass, one in the front, and one in the back, and then um, that will reduce the glares. So you're going to want to mainly use this for things like uh, flying over water or snow, and if uh, you're going to get a lot of reflections or a really really bright day where you have potentially an area where you're going to get a lot of reflections of sunlight, then use this one versus the standard filter. All right, so for the Action 3, you have a totally different set of lenses. So you have the Bright Day 4-pack, and these are the polarizing ones. You can see the little ring there. I'll show you that here in a second. 8, 16, 32, and 64. That's pretty standard. And then on their all-day 6-pack, there's no polarizing filters in this one, just ND 8, 16, 32, 64. Then you have an ND 1000 and an, a UV filter. So this one looks like this, a six pack like so, and then you have a four pack like this. Here's the uh, ND32 polarizing filter. And you can see the ring rotates. And this is the ND64 standard filter. And as you can see, both of these just screw into the uh, lens on the Action 3, just like the, this is the standard lens protector. And they just go in the same way. So 
So again, with the polarizing filter, this does rotate, but in this one, there's no line to show you where the uh, optimal polarization is. So you have to sort of um, figure that out, you know, look at it and look at the footage and see where the where it's positioned best to get the most polarization. Because sometimes you don't want necessarily the maximum amount of polarization, maybe you want a little bit less, so you can adjust that to your needs. And this one here is the ND1000. So basically this is the darkest one. You can see very little light coming through. So this is mainly for those of you guys that maybe want to use the Action 3 for photography and you want to get a long exposure photograph for something. Obviously this is not applicable for people that are going to be flying because you're just going to get really just no footage whatsoever. So this is for photographs and you want a long exposure photograph. Maybe like um, you're photographing like a waterfall or something like that. Something you know, where it's got a lot of movement. It'll slow that down and it'll blur all that. So not that my, not my area of expertise, but if you want to dabble in photography, that's available in this six pack. And then you have the, this is just a, a UV filter, which is just clear. There's no ND on this one. It's really not much different than the stock glass, but this is mainly um, to, to cut down the UV a little bit. That might help a little bit on the footage over the standard piece of glass, which I don't think has any uh, UV capability whatsoever. All right, so I'm going to show you how I have my uh, settings set up here for the footage you're going to see. And I'm going to link the full files down in the video description. You can check it out. So on the Action 2, if you want to use the gyro flow, which is what I did, you want to be in the 4.3 mode. Uh, I'm obviously using 4K60. And you want to have Rocksteady turned off. So basically you don't want this stabilized by the camera. You're going to be stabilizing it um, on your computer. So you have the 4.3 setting there, and then over here for your basically manual settings. So you want field view set to wide. You want uh, you know, whether or not you want color to be normal or decent like is up to you. It depends on whether you want to color grade. I prefer decent like so I can color grade my footage. And then for me, I pick automatic white balance. That's because if uh, depending on where the sun is coming from, you can see that value here will change and I prefer it to be adjusting as you're flying around versus uh, if you just fix it to a manual it will look good in certain angles but then when you turn around and fly maybe like away from the sun and uh, the white balance will look kind of weird so this is what I prefer is automatic white balance some people prefer a manual where it's actually shifting where it looks good and doesn't look good, I really don't like that look. And then for the exposure, uh, you, basically there's a lot of philosophies on how to do this. So most people say that you should do, you know, the 180 rule, 1 over 120, since I'm, fil I'm filming at 60 frames per second. And obviously you want to switch to manual, so you don't want this to be auto, you want it to be manual. 1 over 120 for your shutter speed. And then you want to, you can do some different things here with your ISO value on the Action 2 and Action 3. I'll, sh I'll just show you this on the Action 3 as well. But you can see you can have a fixed manual, uh, or fixed ISO. So you can actually set it to something, a certain value where it won't change at all. And you can also see your, your, your plus EV value over here. I have a uh, ND16 on here right now. You can see how bright it is and then how it changes and this this value will change depending upon which ISO value you set for that shutter speed so let's go ahead and adjust this so as I adjust it down 3200 ISO you can see the EV value is negative or about negative one there and so for you have to sort of figure this out for your whatever lighting conditions you're flying in Obviously, I'm indoor now, so this is this is not a really good example. Um, but you know, you can set it to a fixed ISO where it won't change at all. But I personally don't like that look because the the image will start looking darker or brighter and fluctuate as you're flying around. So what I prefer is actually instead of having a fixed ISO, having a variable ISO where you can hear you can see it's one two. It'll change and fluctuate. It'll go for you know, a lower ISO value to a higher ISO value depending upon the lighting conditions and maintain a more consistent image as you're flying around. So typically, I'm going to probably go for something like 
uh, 1 to 400. You don't want to go this this value to go too high because uh, over about 400 then you start getting sort of noisy image, um, grainy image. That's from a too high ISO value in those spots where maybe you're flying a little bit too dark. Um, you know, so for example, if you're flying under some trees where there's, where there's a lot of shadows and then out into like an open area where it's really bright and sunny, then you're going to want uh, this variable ISO. Um, you only want a fixed ISO if you're, you know you're flying in a very consistent uh, brightness level throughout your flying. Um, then you can perhaps adjust it down to one over two, one to 200 or even just a fixed value. But for most people, most situations, you're going to be flying in variable conditions, in and out of shadows, and you're going to want to adjust that. So to whatever amount you want, you can kind of get away with to up to 800 because as long as you're not flying in, in too dark of an area. And also, I prefer to go with a lower ND versus more ND. So even a really bright day, like ND16 is the most I'll go. Um, if it's a partly cloudy day, I'll go with an ND8. Just because I don't want the shutter speed, well, I, you know, I don't want the stabilization artifacts to come into play. So if it's too dark, sometimes it will, you get some kind of weird effects from the stabilization because of the lower shutter speed. Now, in that case, if you, if you, in a, like, for example, if I'm in a flying in a situation where it's like kind of uh, not super bright out, but maybe like partly cloudy, I'll go with like an ND8 and then I'll actually increase my shutter speed to like maybe 1 over 160 or 1 over 200 just to make sure I don't get those weird shaky uh, stabilization artifacts from the stabilization. So for those of you that have played around with stabilization and ND filters in the past, you'll know what I'm talking about. Give it a try and you know if you stick to 1 over 120 and if, if, if the image is too dark um, you might notice some kind of weird, looks like it's, the camera is like vibrating uh, and you get like this kind of blurry, random blurry vibrations out of nowhere. And that's, those are stabilization artifacts. So if you get those and you want to adjust your ISO and your shutter speed so it's a little bit higher and go with a, a lower ND, you know, maybe move from ND8 to an ND4 just so that you can avoid those stabilization artifacts. All right, so in the Action 3, of course, um, there's no gyro flow support yet, so you want to have Rocksteady turned on and have it stabilized in the camera. And, you know, let's go ahead and set to 4K60. And we'll set our, set our manual settings here. Decently like color, 10 bit. And then uh, I go for the, usually I go for the wide or the ultra wide field of view. Again, automatic white balance. And then exposure, again, this has, this works the same way as it does on the Action 2. So we'll set this to 1 over 120. And you can see the variable ISO here on the right. And it goes up to 1 to 12,800 and you can set it individually 100 to a maximum of 12,800. You see how, how blown out that is with that um, massive uh, ISO value, but then you get super grainy footage. Yeah, so it works the same way um, on the Action 3 as it is on the Action 2, just that this one, you have to use Rocksteady internally on the camera to get stabilization versus you can go gyro flow on the Action 2. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That's my sort of philosophy on how I, uh, you know, use indie filters on my Action 2 and Action 3. And hopefully that'll help you guys out, get the, sort of the best footage that you're looking for. I'll put links to examples down in the video description on the Action 2 with Gyroflow and the Action 3 with Rocksteady. Now let me know in the comments below which stabilization looks better to you. Uh, obviously it's very subjective. Some people think Rocksteady looks better. Some people think Gyroflow looks better. Um, it really kind of depends. Uh, honestly, to me, um, I'm okay with Rocksteady if I just want to get quick results. Uh, for example, I want to just fly really quick, get the footage off the camera, and just post it to like Facebook, Instagram. Uh, I would go that route, and I'd be totally fine with that. But if I want something a little bit more professional, more you know, and more uh, more tweakability, if I want to mix or make adjustments in how much stabilization I want, then yeah, you want to go with Gyroflow. There's a lot of flexibility in that. Um, Regarding Gyroflow, you want to be on version 1.42 or later. I think the latest version is 1.50. For 
pretty easy to do. You just drag and drop the files onto the dryer flow window and it automatically detects the lens profile and the motion data, is, uh, is the, which is embedded in the video file. It does that automatically. Uh, one thing to note is if on these, on these, on the, at least on the Action 2, if it splits the files up, I think it's every four minutes it splits the files up, uh, drag and drop um, multiple, you can drag and drop multiple files onto Gyroflow, and then it'll ask you if you, if it wants, if you want to combine them into one file, and then it will do that, and when you export that, it'll export one single file. So, yeah, just make sure you're using Gyroflow 1.42 or later, and it'll be, you're good to go on the Action 2 with Gyroflow. All right, that's going to cover for this video, super long video, hopefully it was helpful. Let me know in the comments below if you got any questions, and that'll do it for this one.